Hello, my name is Randy Simmons. Some that may know me might be surprised to learn that in addition to the things they do know about me, that uh, there's one more thing to add to the list, and that is that I am a writer. For the past 30 years, I've been writing articles for uh, trade and business journals, but the type of writing that I like most is writing poetry. I never know what's going to inspire me when I write. It sometimes is very mundane and ordinary. Sometimes it's things that are quite extraordinary. I write about life and sometimes it's motivated by political activity in our country. Sometimes it's about social issues. Sometimes it's about family, friends. I never really know what's going to inspire me at any point in time, but when I am inspired, I feel compelled to write about it in the form of poetry. Oftentimes it hits me at the wee hours of the morning and I am basically aroused by the thought and I come down to my office and I begin to write. Recently there's been a lot of discussion about abortion legislation, uh, particularly in New York and Virginia. and. I felt particularly compelled to write about this. I have um, very strong feelings about abortion. I believe that there is um, a time when abortion must unfortunately be performed, particularly because of a mother's health and well-being, but so many abortions are performed without um, regard to um, the life of the child and when the mother's health isn't necessarily in jeopardy. I'd like to begin by providing some context and I think it will give much greater meaning and sensitivity to the poem which I have written. And so the context that I want to begin with are things that are kind of interesting, but it becomes darker as I dig into different statistics. Here's a big number. 24,293,858. That number represents the combined population of the top 10 U.S. cities ranked by population. Here's another number. 1,301,834. That number represents all the troops killed in all major U.S. wars beginning with the Civil War and ending with the Gulf War. Here's another number. 39,144,818. That number represents the population of the largest state in the United States, California. Here's another big number, 59,993,844. That number represents the total number of registered vehicles on the streets ranked by top 10 states based upon car registrations. Here's another big number, 61 million 99,315. That number represents the total number of abortions in the United States since Roe v. Wade in 1973. That number represents two and a half times more than the population of the top 10 cities in the United States. It represents 47 times the number of troops killed in U.S. wars. It represents one and a half times the population of the top 10 U.S. states by population combined. It represents 1.1 million more than the total registered vehicles on the streets in the top 10 states ranked by registration. Here's another number. 8,000,000. 346,281. And that number represents abortions performed by Planned Parenthood since 1970. 
Here's another number. 157,470. That number represents the number of abortions in the United States as of 533 Eastern Standard Time today, March 31st, 2019. And here's another number. 1,871. That represents the number of abortions performed just today in the United States as of 5.33 Eastern Standard Time on March 1st, 2019. Talk about a national emergency. Why isn't abortion being discussed every single day in the national media, yet it happens to be a subject that weighs heavy on the American consciousness? Is it because it's too controversial? that our political leaders are so morally bankrupt that they put their jobs in their fear of losing political funding ahead of the sanctity of life? Is it because our leaders aren't able to clearly articulate a moral position on when life begins? Here's another number. 2,491. This is the House bill number that Virginia delegate Kathy Tran introduced to the Virginia House that would eliminate important checks and balances um, that would effectively um, uh, influence a woman's informed consent. And this ultimately would have paved the way for late-term abortions up to the time of birth. Fortunately, this bill died in committee, but I presume it will come back around again and may just pass. Have our political leaders lost their humanity to special interest groups that they boldly introduce and sign legislation that no matter the reason allows abortion after 24 weeks? But Andrew Cuomo would not stand for any more obstruction and signed legislation which opens the door to late-term abortion after 24 weeks, joining 17 other states that permit abortion between the 24th and 28th week. Pregnancy may vary, but the point of a fetus generally reaching viability and basically able to survive outside the womb is between 24 and 28 weeks. Ask yourself these questions. How many Mozarts or Beethovens or Einsteins or Hawkings or Van Goghs or Michelangelos or Pasteurs or Salk have been lost to abortion. How many of the millions of abortions were due to a mother's health risk or due to rape or incest? Using simple common sense would tell you that likely a small percentage of the total. What if your own mother, your own mother, had decided she didn't want a child when she was pregnant with you? and you were aborted without the ability to fight against it or before even given a chance no matter the cause? Would any decision be justified knowing that if your life had been terminated that you could be adopted by a loving family and raised as one of their own? These are tough questions. These are tough questions to think about and to ponder. But as a writer, for me, these facts and questions have inspired me to write the poem that I'm about to read to you and I believe could not wait until the publishing of the book that I am working on. It was difficult to write and I hope it moves every listener to tears. It did me. So close your eyes as I read this and feel the words in this poem I call A Life Never Known. The helpless one within the womb, innocent of the world around, with endless potential for all things good, its existence of life abounds. Life is sacred no matter its cause, whether recklessness, brute, or pure love. It's the power of God and the spark from above, giving life regardless of motive. 
His existence is now singular with a soul stamped in life, but not ready to be given a name. Regardless of circumstances surrounding its start, it is innocent of all. There is no blame. Our society is sickened by the choices some make when a life is snuffed out deep within. It's the insanity of life that adds to the strife and regret that the act was a sin. The child never took a look at the light or to breathe its first breath on its own, but it heard every word of the decision quite absurd that its life will never be known. Our humanity is in decline. Think.